All right. How are we doing? I'm going to going to restart unless we have the audio kicking in here. Can we hear now? Can we hear now or do we need to restart? Ah, there we go. Trent, thank you. Um, all right. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I was I was talking to myself, obviously, but um, I went up going to the Panthers game, the Carolina Panthers. And uh, so I got back about five minutes before eight and I didn't get a chance to do my my right audio check. So thanks for thanks for hanging out with me. And um, um, all right. Cool. So here we go. Now I will um, I'll go back and start where I was. I'm going to come back to Fox Moth's question. Um, he had a question about a trailer. I'm going to come back to that because I, Jim, I think you're still on. He was asking about Proline boats. Um, yes. So here's the deal. Proline stopped making boats for a number of years. I'm not sure if there's new ownership, new management. I don't know. And I haven't inspected the new Proline boats yet. So um, I, I don't have any opinion, but I will say, about the no wood construction is most manufacturers aren't using wood. And if they are using wood, they're using it in a very strategic place that is not going to be drilled into. It's not going to have the opportunity. It's fully encapsulated in foam or in, um, in resin and, um, and fiberglass. And it's, it's going to be fine. They're using it for a very specific purpose. Wood is a great sound absorber, and it deadens any impact. There's got some absorption to it. So it's a good material, except for the fact it can rot. So if you can put it in the if you can put it in the construction where it's not going to get any water intrusion, I'm okay with wooden a boat. What I'm not okay is is wooden a stringer system where you're gonna have to bolt through um, to mount something, where you're gonna have to screw into it, and now you get water intrusion if you don't seal it up. So when they talk about manufacturers talk about composite material, all, all that means is all that composite material means is it's, it's two materials. That's all composite means. It means we put some of this and we put some of that, and now we got a new material. So some of them are using styrofoam as their composite material. It's very lightweight, um, but it gives the resin something to go on that makes it really, really strong when you, when you put two materials together that have two different properties and when they do it the right way, it can be great, but just the no wood don't think that is the end all be all. They may be doing it just because it's, it's a cheaper, um, a, a cheaper method. So I've got to dig into Proline. They started rebuilding boats. I want to say it was 2017 or 2018, maybe. Um, so they, they haven't been going back at it for long. They have a long line of history, but then they stopped and then they picked up again, which is very common in the, in the boating industry. So, um, Jim, I'm not sure. Okay. You can hear me. So good, Jim. Hopefully you got that answer. Um, I am, I, I was just looking at boat shows this past um, uh, week with my wife and saying, okay, we're going to go, her and I are going to go to the Chicago show, um, maybe to the Nashville show together. Um, the, the coastal shows, I, I'm, I've got to figure those out, but hopefully in January, I'll be hitting three or four different shows and, and we'll spend three or four days so I can go through more brands and, and get to more because it seems like you guys are really liking those um, those big hour long videos. It takes a crap load to put them together, uh, but it seems like you guys are getting value. So be be happy to do that. So, um, Jim, that's my answer for you there. Um, let's go to uh, Rom. Uh, Rom, thanks for telling me my audio was not working and the back working. Uh, I'm going to purchase a 2011 Yamaha AR 250 hour survey will examine anything I should look out for specifically. It's vinyl wrapped. Um, okay. The vinyl wrap is, you know, you can inspect that and see if it's got dicks and dings and scratches on it. That's going to, um, cause problems down the line. Uh, from what I've been hearing, they, 
they're actually pretty durable. Um, so here's my recommendation is those 250 hours on a 10 year old boat, 25 hours a year. I would try to, I would ask them, Rom, what, like, when did you put the hours on? How many hours did you put on in the last two years? Cause you want to make sure that it's been around 25 hours a year and not we did 100 hours the first year, 50 hours the second year, 50 hours the third year, 50 hours the fourth year, and then we haven't used it for five years. Um, but then you want to go through the engine. Remember, Rom, um, the surveyor is only going to survey the structure of the boat unless you have an agreement that he's going to do mechanical inspection. So there's two different people. The surveyor is all about construction and make sure the hull is solid, which on that, it probably is. You're probably in good shape. He's going to tap the hull. He's going to look at stuff that you probably wouldn't recognize. So it's not a bad investment, but they're typically not going to be very well versed in the, the jet drives uh, and those Yamaha engines. So it's going to be on you to make sure that you do a full-on sea trial and because that AR has got twins, you're going to want to make sure that you run each engine a little bit uh, and listen to it on its own. Um, you're probably not going to run the boat wide open throttle with just one engine. It's, it's not a safe thing to do, really, uh, or a practical thing to do. But I would um, I'm going to stop sharing this and actually just go full screen. I would, um, Rom, make sure you put the boat in the water, run through its paces. So um, in gear neutral reverse and take a, about a three second pause in between. Uh, how does each engine shift? So I would do that each engine. Um, I would do from um, with both engines together from a idle to a wide open throttle. I would run wide open throttle for a minute or two. That's a long time to run a boat wide open throttle, um, but it's, it's safe to do it. Um, but run it for an extended period of time and just run the boat for 15, 20 minutes, 20 minutes or more is best. Um, but, um, but at 15 is the bare, bare minimum. Uh, and you want to make, do some turns. You want to do some reverses. If it's got any, um, I don't know if those ARs, that's a, that's their pretty base model outside the SX, but, um, they're probably not going to have a lot of cruise settings and things like that. If they do make sure you're testing that go into docking mode and run it in their docking mode. Um, but, uh, and then I would also, I would get, open up that clean out port rom that's a, a big one make sure that that clean out ports to get access to the the shaft um there's a little kind of plunger top that you pull out and then you can reach down you can feel that shaft make sure that there's nothing in there make sure that that pops out that tells you that they've kept it clean and um and you don't want to get in a situation where that's really hard to get out after 10 years if they've never pulled it it could be difficult uh, but you want to make sure you have access to that uh, that clean out port um, all right. So all the audio nonsense updates, our thoughts, we'll go to Trent here. Um, thoughts where the boating market is going to go this off season. So I'm about ready to do a new market update. I've got to do my research to get the numbers together, but here's, here's what I'm hearing from the industry, um, is still record sales. Uh, Rom, you're very welcome. Uh, you're very welcome. And uh, hopefully that helps. Um, so the industry. All right. Here's where we're at right now is demand is still high. Okay. The biggest problem is supply. There's supply chains issues. I've seen, I've seen people driving by um, a, a boat factory and um, they're like, there's a hundred boats sitting outside. Why aren't they getting to the dealer? Well, it's because they're missing a motor. Yamaha's having a hell of a time getting motors into the country. They won. They dealt with COVID. So they shut their factories down for a month or two. Um, and then here's what happened. The, their suppliers shut their factories down for a month or two. Those factories, their suppliers shut their factories down for a month or two. And then that raw material shut down their plants for a month or two. So slowly, Though it's just staggering and those supply chain issues keep catching up. And then you add on that the container ships, they are container. They don't, they can't get the containers to put a hundred Yamaha motors in 
ship it across the ocean. Um, and when they do get those containers, there's nobody at the ports to unload them. Um, they're having issues getting those unloaded. So what that means is the demand is still up, right? The demand is still up and the supply is still way down. Most dealers, when you go to their showroom floor, most dealers don't have much of anything uh, on hand. Many of the dealers I've talked to have 20, 30. I talked to one dealer that had 120 boats on order for customers. They had one boat in their showroom floor, 120 boats on order. They were just waiting to come in. So all of these manufacturers still have to meet that demand of ordered boats to get them shipped out. That's why you're hearing people say, um, yeah, I ordered a boat and it took six months to get in. Now that it may be two months or four months, it may still be six months. Um, and they're not promising anything because they know there's those supply chain issues down the line, motors being a big one, but it could just be, um, you know, it could just be a small part to put the windshield on. Uh, it could be, you know, a, a pump because most of these parts, you know, they're not, they're not super common, right? If, a if a manufacturer makes some small change and now the industry standard three suppliers, don't aren't able to supply that and they've got to custom order it. Well, they're in a world of hurt right now. And I'm actually at the end of this month, I'm going down to Tampa, Florida to Ibex. Um, it is the international boat builder expo. So I'm going to go down and I've got some cool demos set up on the, um, the hydro fin, uh, the, the, um, hydro fin that you put on pontoons. Uh, I've got one set up with the new electric motor manufacturer, um, that's going to be, um, uh, I, I forget the name of it, Evos maybe. Uh, but I, I remember, forget the one that I've, I've got set up with to learn more about that. But I'm also going to talk to those suppliers of the Perco switches, the battery switches to the, the bilge pumps, the windshields, all those little pieces and components to find out what's going on. Um, and I'll, that's the 28th, 29th and 30th of September. I'm heading down there. So that's the new side, but that new side impacts the used side because on the used side now, the guy that was going to buy a new boat, a brand new boat, well, he says, I can't get it. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll just go use because I can get that tomorrow uh, when I find the right one. Well, he would have spent 50 grand was his budget to buy a new one. And now he'll spend 45. He may even spend 50 or 55 just because he wants to get on the water now. Um, and I see it, you know, so then the guy that would have spent 30 grand, he says, well, I'll spend 40 grand. I can afford it. I don't want to, but I can, the guy that was going to spend 20 says I'll spend 25 or 30. The guy that was going to spend 10 says, shit, I can't afford what I want to get. Um, and you know, he may, he may go on hold, but I think we've got at least another 12 to probably 18 months just to catch up. Once we catch up, I think, you know, it depends what the economy is doing. It depends what the political environment is that in 24 to 36 months, we get back in the pres presidential. Um, well, what, who's our, who's going to be our leader? What's the business world say about that? What's COVID going to do? Are we going to have a resurgence and more shutdowns and small businesses shutting down? Is there going to be stimulus? There's a lot of questions, but I think for 18 months, I think we're going to still see the same, um, the same demand, the same high prices. And I think you're also seeing on Boat Trader uh, and, and some of the marketplaces, Facebook Marketplace, uh, Yacht World, depending on what style you're looking at, boats.com, you're seeing people that say, well, hell, if I can sell my boat for 10 grand more than I bought it, I'll put it out there. I'll wait and get, get a new one. And so you're seeing you're seeing more boats on the market and you're seeing some of them that are just, they're so far out of their mind of what they think they're going to get. Um, and they're just testing the water. So you kind of got to throw those guys out. They're probably not going to sell them, but there's a big number of them that they're going to sell it for what they bought it for. Um, you know, they're going to, they're going to maybe make some money on it and, until the new boats catch up that higher end, you know, five to maybe seven year old used boats, that market's going to be really tight until the new boats catch up. Um, and not only do they have to fulfill the orders that they have, 
but then they got to refill the dealer inventory. So the dealers need to restock because their inventory level is, is way, way down. Um, so once you fill out the customers, the way boat builders work is order comes in and I've got a production spot. I know I'm going to make um, 20 of this model boat through that run. So I've got 20 of this a ABC model that I can run down the factory floor. And what happens is they say, well, okay, we've got 20 spots. We have eight customer orders and 12 inventory boats for dealers. They'll put all the customers first and they'll deliver their customers. But if a new customer order comes in, they'll jump ahead of the dealer inventory. So they keep building these boats and most of them are for customers and not to fulfill dealer inventory. So until that gets there, um, I, I think we're going to continue to see kind of the marketplace that we're seeing now. So that's, that's my, uh, that's my take on that. Um, all right. So thank you, Rom. You're very welcome. Um, very welcome. Chris Yao. If money were no object regarding initial purchase price and training, what's the largest size boat single person should operate safely live aboard chris tell me tell me where you are are you um are you in a coastal environment are you in a freshwater lake are you in a river situation what does that look like for you because it kind of um it kind of changes greg i'll get to your question next okay um uh Chris, tell me what, what your situation is, because there is, if you're an individual, like for me, um, on a lake, on an inland lake, I could take out a 30 footer, um, with ease, you know, you get to a, a 34, um, <laughs> Miami, Florida. Okay. So you're on the coast. So you've got a little bit of tides down there. You've got, you got a little bit of current. Um, you've got, you know, depending on how sheltered of a, of a uh, marina that you're able to get in, um, I would think you start getting to 35 and, you know, if you're, if you're a first time boater, I'm, I'm going to assume Chris that you're a first time boater. Tell me if that's wrong. Um, but, um, so, you're a, a first time boater looking for a live aboard in Miami. Um, you start to get to 35 and depending on if it's just a cruiser where you're all on one level, well, now you can, you can get it in the docks. Um, you can have all your dock lines ready and your fenders all prepared, ready to go. But once you hit that dock, um, you have got to, let's see. Um, okay. Once you hit that dock, you've got to be able to get from the helm to get that first dock line on. Like that's the most important is getting that first dock line on. Once you get the first dock line on, um, then you're, you know, you've got the boat somewhat secured and you can make some inputs to, to put it where you need it. Um, if you're by yourself and you're in, you know, you get to a 40 foot and you're in a, an aft cabin or a sedan bridge where you're going to be up top and now you got to come down a ladder and then get off to off the boat, um, man, it's, it's going to be difficult. You need to be calling ahead to the Marina. Uh, but that's the other thing, Chris is, is the Marinas will typically have yard guys or, or dock hands, um, that can help you out. You can call in on the radio, uh, you know, Hey, this is, um, uh, you know, this is uh, Flybridge 52, uh, coming in to slip, you know, F doc. Um, and they'll, they'll send somebody out there. Now you got to tip them and all that stuff. But I, I would say if you're, if you're brand new, um, 30, maybe 35 starts to be okay. It's pretty big. Um, if you, if you're experienced and you've got help at the, at the Marina, uh, in most cases, you know, you can go up to a 40 footer and, and probably be okay. You got to be pretty competent, um, to do it 100% by yourself. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, so check out Chris, check out the, um, the used cruiser video 30 or what is it? 24 to 40 feet. Um, that'll give you a pretty good idea. And, and you notice I cut that at 40 foot as well. You start to get over 40 foot and it, it turns into kind of a new category of boat. You start looking at diesel engines, you start looking at more complex systems and things like that. Um, so, all right, Greg. Looking to purchase a new bow rider down to Sea Ray Chaparral. Um, 
I'm going to, I'm going to lean towards the dealer, Greg, a hundred percent that they're, here's the thing. If you look at how boats are built and I'm just, I'm working on the, um, I, I'm working on how pontoons are built right now. Um, you can see the, the slides right here that I'm working on. And I go through, talk about that. I just did. If you, if you want to look at the, um, the center console video that I did, Greg, I go through how fiberglass holes are made. I'm going to do a complete video on how fiberglass boats are made. And, um, C Ray and Chaparral, very, very similar processes. Um, as far as their construction quality, the, the 23, I mean, if you're, I don't know what the, what the, um, the LOA, the total length and the beam is, I, I'm pretty sure the 21 C Ray isn't, is an eight and a half foot beam boat. I would assume that 23 Chaparral is as well. Um, uh, well, I take that back. Yeah, they, I bet they're both, uh, they're both eight and a half beams is I would, if they are, and it's not a size thing. I, I don't know if that Chaparral 23 is a bigger boat. Um, just sheerly construction. I'm going to go based on the dealer. The dealer that I've got is either most local and most convenient. Um, I've got the best connection with, the best relationship with. I feel most confident that they're going to take care of me. Um, they're most willing to negotiate. Like all of those things are going to come into play. But boat to boat, I'm going to say you're not going to see much. You're not going to experience much difference. Um, by going one or the other, you're not going to be like, oh my God, that, I, that was such a better decision. You're going to buy it and you're going to say, I love this boat in either case. Um, I'll, I'll say that the SPXs, they're not built in my mind to the same C ray quality that you would expect in a, uh, in a, uh, what is it? The SLX or the SDX, their, their deck boats or their bow riders. Um, it, it they, they do cut a little bit. The Chaparral 23, that SSI is, um, is, is built pretty well, but I, I would say boat to boat, they're going to be very similar. Did that, um, Greg, was that helpful? It's, I, I think for so many people buying a new boat, I think the deal, once you get it narrowed down to two or three, maybe even four models and, and manufacturers, you know, you like the model, you know, you like the layout, uh, you like the power. I think the next thing is that's going to differentiate between those four that you like, they're probably going to be in that same category, premium, mid tier or value is, is the dealer. I, I really come down to dealer as even more than the tiebreaker because they're going to have such a big impact on how much you enjoy your boating experience. It just, they, they make a world of difference. So they make a world of difference. So hopefully, Greg, that was that was helpful for you. Um, anybody else? I, we got eight people on right now. We don't have a ton of folks. Um, I probably with my with my audio issues, there were some people that jumped off. Awesome, Greg. Uh, thanks for thanks for being on. If you guys if you guys want, you can check out the um, uh, what is it? The first time Boat Buyers Academy. Um, that's a, a program I put together where I really, I really uh, walk through all of the details of um, of going through the process. There's some negotiation pieces in there. It's a great way to help support the the channel and what we're doing here. I mean, I do make some money on the on the YouTube ads. It's you know for for the time and effort I put in. It's it's not it's it's not insignificant. Um, but, um, but it's not, it's not a full-time income. I'll tell you that, but, um, but that's why I put the programs together. There's even more value in there and, um, and people have gotten, have gotten lots of, uh, lots of value from those. Uh, what good size boat for weekend trips as a new boater? All right, David, there's a lot of questions here that that's a, if anybody answers that question, um, they're giving you a terrible answer. I, I wouldn't trust them. So here's what you need to know. Uh, and I talk about this in the first time Boat Buyers Academy. Um, number one is 
what water are you going to be boating on? What what kind is are you in the ocean? Are you um, on the intercoastal waterway? Are you on an inland lake? Are you on a lake of the Ozarks? Are you on a small sand pit lake? Um, what what size is it? Number two is what's your boating plan? What do you want to do on the water? Are you going to do water sports? Um, just doing some some cruising. Uh, are you doing fishing? Are you going offshore fishing, near shore fishing, uh, bass fishing, Great Lakes? Okay, so keep keep answering my question. Just keep throwing them in, uh, David, and I'll I'll, I'll continue to talk. Um, so the those are the questions that are so key to answer a simple question of what's a good size boat for weekend trips as a new boater. Um, it, it's why there's so much bad advice. It's why I put together the, the boat buyers Academy is because I, I try to walk people through step by step by step so they can make these small little decisions that then kind of funnel them down from, I want a boat to what style of boat, what size boat, what most, what motor, what horsepower, what options, um, all cruising, no fishing, Okay, so what you're on the Great Lakes? Which Great Lake are you on? And um, are you going to be boating on the weekends? Are you going to okay weekend trips? You already said overnight trips. Okay, so how many people, David, are going to be overnighting with you? What does that look like? You taking your family of four out? Are you taking just you and your buddies? You and your you and your significant other? Um, because now we're talking cruiser probably. Ontario and Toronto. Okay. My geography is bad, David. So you're gonna have to give me an actual lake. Um, mostly my wife. Okay. So two people overnighting Ontario. Um, all right, Chris, I'll get, I'll get back to you here. Um, so, okay. So with what I've got right now is you can do it in a 24 foot cruiser. Um, it will be tight. It will be uncomfortable Lake Ontario. Okay. Um, it will be uncomfortable. It'll be tight. You probably won't have air conditioning, which up in Toronto may not be a huge deal um, in the you know most of the season. I start to think about when I'm overnighting just for the weekend, I start to look at about a 26, 28 to 30 foot in that range. It's easy enough for me to handle. Um, I assume, David, that you'll leave it in the water. Uh, if you're going to be overnighting that you're not going to be trailering it, you're going to stay at a marina, um, which then you, I would encourage you, David, also to go watch the used cruiser video that I mentioned um, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, the used cruiser 24 to, to 40 foot. Um, it's going to give you a lot of things to think about because then you've got to think about, do I need air conditioner? Am I going to overnight at the marina or am I going to overnight on the anchor or am I going to overnight? Um, you know, at, at, um, at a transient dock somewhere. And I don't know if they'll have electricity that's going to tell you, do you need a generator or not? How important is a generator? Um, that's the generator opens up more space for you, but size wise, you got to be kind of 28 to 30 foot to have room for a generator. So size 20, I would say 26, the smallest, unless, um, you and your wife are, are smaller people. Um, and, and, that is headroom. Can you stand up? If it rains or, or you know, the pop-up shower comes up, are you going to be comfortable being down in a 24 footers cabin for eight hours? Are you going to be able to sleep comfortably and, and do the things that you want to do? So I, I start thinking 24 is probably too small for most people that are really overnighting consistently. 26, 28, 30, anything over 30 is you, you don't need it. Um, for, for a couple, but anything over 30 is just going to give you more options, give you more space, uh, give you more headroom. So hopefully David, that, uh, that will help you. Um, and, and that video, I, I'm, I promise you that video, even though if, if you're going to go new, you'll still get a lot of value out of that used cruiser video. Um, it's been super popular. It gets a lot of great comments and it, it will open your eyes to that lifestyle um, and as far as size goes, once you get to 28, you know, that you're, you're going to be able to make it through any water on the great lakes and be good. It's more about comfort than at that point. All right. So Chris, we're going to come back to you. Importance of three piece, two piece construction. It, here's the deal. Three pieces stronger 
it's if you're going offshore, if you're going to be going out in, you know, you're a charter captain, you're going to be going out in rougher conditions. Yeah. Three pieces, the way to go. It's going to be more sturdy, more stout. It's going to be, you're going to have finished, um, fiberglass compartments and hatches and things like that. Um, but I'm going to say it is not necessary. Chris, thank you so much. Um, I, I just found out on my last week's Facebook or my last week live that people could give me money. I, I didn't even know that was a possibility. Um, and, and I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys supporting what I'm doing here and, uh, hopefully I, I deliver value and earn it. So, so very much, very much appreciate it. I'll get back to your question now, um, fishing, cruising in Miami area, inshore and offshore. So, the more offshore you're going and the more offshore you're going to go in worse conditions, the more important the three piece construction is to me. If you're a charter captain and you got a charter and you're going out, unless it's dangerous, got to have three piece construction. You know, you need something like a, uh, you know, a regulator. There's a number of them that have three piece construction. If you're a pleasure boater that's going to go offshore fishing, you're going to be pretty diligent about checking out the weather, um, and, and you're you're going to stay home if it looks too crappy, then I would say two pieces probably okay. If you're not going offshore hardly at all, and you're mainly going to stay in the bays, you're going to, yeah, you're going to hit some chop, but you're not going to be out in, in three, four foot rollers and really putting it to it. You know, you're got, not going through Hullover Inlet every weekend. Um, then I'm going to say you're probably okay with the two piece, but it's all about usage um, and and um, you know how often you're going out in the really really rough stuff. Now, if you can afford it, and I don't want to say money is not a factor, but the your budget allows you to get everything that you want, and you want a more solid ride because you'll feel the difference. Not only is it more structurally sound and safer, but you'll literally feel the difference when you're going through that chop. It'll be it'll be much more solid than you know. Kind of, I, I always equate it to if you've ever if you've ridden in a Kia and then you ride in a Mercedes or a BMW or even a Cadillac, you just it feels different. Uh, and the same thing happens. The same thing happens in boats and that two piece and three piece construction. If they're using three piece construction. They're probably doing a lot of other things right as well in that, uh, in the, in that build. So, uh, hopefully that's helpful. And Chris, I got a lot of comments on my center console video. What about contender? What about invincible? What about this? What about that? I know I missed a bunch of them. There's probably over a hundred manufacturers and I, I did as many as I could in the day. I mean, I, I, was just boat to boat to boat. If you looked at my Google drive, I've got just uh, hundreds of photos from that, uh, just that one show in Charleston, uh, last, uh, January. So I'm going to open it up. I'm going to try to go to most more shows this year and, and start getting deeper into some of the, um, some of the additional manufacturers that are out there. All right. Um, hog snicks, whatever. Um, what's your stance on buying older sport fish boats, 90 to 2000, 35 to 40 range. Just got a survey done about to pull the trigger. <sighs> Listen is it's all about how it's been maintained. It's about how it's been taken care of. Um, you know, on a, a sport fish in that size range, I would hope that they have some sort of, uh, log so that they can say, Hey, here's our, here's our service log. And, um, here's the runs that we've made. If it, you know, if they did fishing tournaments, they, they might have a log. That type of inf information is important to me. If they have somebody that takes care of it, a boat yard that it sits in, I would go talk to the, the people at the boat yard who did the service and say, Hey, can you pull the service records on it? Let me know. The survey is great. I'm glad that you did. Um, I'm glad that you did a survey on a boat like that. There's a lot of systems. There's a lot of things that just a normal boat buyer isn't, isn't aware of to look at. And even if they did see it, they may not see, oh crap, that's a problem. Um, so hopefully they hauled it. Um, I, 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 I'm guessing in that range, are, are you, if it's diesel 35 Cabo, um, is that, uh, is that a diesel or is that a, an inboard gas? Um, 
And, and I would talk to the surveyor, go through, go to the report. Um, you know, the, everything will be listed in the report, but, but also talk to them and say, Hey, you know, give me a little bit of your, of your insight there. And, um, they, they may say something that, that will, you know, give you a yes or no, but if, if you've done the survey, you've done the mechanical inspection. Remember, I, I mentioned it earlier today already, the surveyor does not do a mechanical inspection. So they will do a C trial and they'll run it, but they're not going through the engine. They're not looking at, you know, they'll run the generator, um, but they're not looking at, it, it's hard to describe, but they're not a technician looking at it. They're just looking for, can I hear, does anything sound right? But they're not tearing into it much. They're not pulling compression in most situations, um, depending on the type of engine that it is. So if everything's checking out and you've done a full complete sea trial, you've put that thing through its paces. I don't have a problem with an older boat if they've they've really looked to make sure there's no water intrusion, there's no delamination anywhere. You've hauled it, you've looked at the running gear um, in depth. Surprise me how detailed. Good that that's good. It's like I when I do home inspections, I won't buy a house without a home inspection. I want that home inspector. I want to pay him the most money I can. Uh, diesel cats. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not a huge diesel guy. They're great. I don't know a whole lot about diesel engine. I've always been around gas engines. It's one of the reasons I stopped my used cruiser video at 40. Cause at 40, um, it is kind of the, the switching point to your almost all diesel over 40 feet. Um, that's another reason why I cut it there. But, uh, as long as you feel good about the survey, as long as you feel good about those engines, and, um, you know, uh, even if it's a 90, um, you know, those diesel engines should run 15, 20, 30,000 hours before they need to be rebuilt, uh, depending on how well they're taken care of. So that, you know, figure that in, it, but I, I would be shocked unless these guys ran this boat a ton, which is in some cases is good that it got used a lot. But um, you just want a, a consistent usage, somebody that maintained it, kept care of it properly preferably took, um, uh, have some records, has their service records, uh, preferably done by somebody that, that really knows what they're doing and, and, um, doesn't just change the oil, uh, but they do that and they inspect everything, uh, and, and are looking to things. So, um, hopefully that was helpful and, uh, that's awesome. Um, I think those are, are some fun boats. Uh, my, my buddy had a, his dad in Wrightsville beach, uh, w right outside Wilmington, North Carolina, a, um, a 40 footer that we would go out on. Now it was, this is in my single days when we did more drinking and, uh, we're all hung over before we could go fishing on it, but oh, we had some fun times on that boat. That's for sure. Um, going to, uh, what was the, what was the sandbar that we would go to, uh, the sandbar right off Wrightsville beach that we would go. But anyway, any, anybody else, anybody else have any, have any questions? And, uh, again, Chris, thank you for, for, um, that contribution. Uh, I, I do, I definitely, definitely appreciate it. Um, David, I think I answered all of his Chris we got his Greg, we got his, any, anybody else, like I said earlier, is I went to unexpectedly, a buddy of mine offered me his, um, Carolina Panthers football tickets. So I took my, my 10 year old daughter to her, to her first, um, her first NFL game and her, her cheer coach from her dance studio is, um, is one of the Carolina cheerleaders. So I gotta, I gotta go to the NFL game with my daughter whose coach was cheering and, um, we had a, we just had a blast hung out downtown. So I'm kind of beat. If there's no more questions, I'm going to, I'm going to cut it, um, here, but I'd be happy to go till nine o'clock. If, uh, if anybody has any other, any other questions. Um, Adolf, I'm not really sure what, uh, <laughs> what you're doing, <laughs> but I guess thanks for watching the videos. Um, probably unnecessary. <laughs> Chris, thanks a lot. Have a great night.
Oh. Anybody else have anything besides Adolf Hitler 666? Oh my God, the internet's a weird place. It is an odd, odd place. We'll put that up so you guys, I don't know if anybody else saw. <laughs> All right. If we, I'm going to give it one more minute here. Any, any last questions? Thank you guys. Thank you guys for, uh, for joining. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, thanks a lot. That's enough dead air for me. Um, I, uh, I appreciate y'all joining me. Thank you guys for everybody for, for watching the videos, liking the videos, uh, leaving comments. It, um, one, it helps the channel get to more people that, um, that may not have found it yet. Let's YouTube know that, uh, that you enjoy the, uh, the information and, um, and I, it, it helps me. And I know that you guys are, are getting value out of it and, uh, motivates me to, to keep making videos and keep making them better. I, I realize that I don't have the best graphics and I, um, and ah, more than I like to, but it's something that I really enjoy doing. I really enjoy this. And, um, I, I enjoy the comments that say, that say, um, thank you, or this helped me make a decision, or I bought this boat because of the information you, you shared with me. And, uh, that, that means a lot. I, I don't know if cats are the future. I think, I think they're, I talked to the world cat rep, um, when I was at Charleston, it's, it's the only cat that I've really ever inspected. And, um, from what I hear, the, the ride is incredible. Um, there's a, a lot of advantages there is also, it's new. It's not new. It's different. It's different. The ride's different. The look's different. The handling is different. Um, but there are definitely advantages. I think that we're definitely going to see more of them. I think that um, I think that they're going to take over a segment of the market. But, but I also think that people love the look of just a, a center console, you know, a, a 25, 30 foot center console that it's just the cat boats just don't look the same. And it's, you know, I, I don't know that they're going to take over, but, um, I, I think they, they certainly will take a percentage of the, of the V haul marketplace in the next five years. Uh, but, I, but I don't think it's going to take over in, in at least the short term, in at least five years, maybe even 10 years uh, before you have a generation that's kind of been around them. They've, they've showed their salt and, um, and uh, they, they'll take a bigger market share. That's kind of my, that's totally opinion though. There's it's based on very little facts or information. That's just, just my opinion. David, you're very welcome. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining us. Thanks for the comments and interacting with uh, with this video and, and others. I, I really appreciate it. All right. So no other questions have popped in. So I'm going to call it quits. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. And um, I, I think there's a new video that either dropped today or uh, is going to be dropping soon. Um, so dredging channels. I don't know anything about dredging. I know I know that. Um, yeah, I, 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 we had our channel dredged it, at an inland lake uh, at the marina that I worked at, but um, I mean they just put a they just put a uh, front end scoop on a barge and they just scooped it out. I mean they were poop. I'm not sure what that is, Jengarin. You were on the you asked some questions last week. Um, Dredging channels, 
with poop? I'm not even sure. But anyway, they they dredged the channel and they just they scooped it up and um, made it, you know, in in some of the places where the where the waves were washing in the sediment, and they, you know, so they cleaned that out. I think they added another foot. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what you're doing, man. Uh, that, that, so that's that's all I know. Like I watched them do that. I took some videos, and but I I have no idea why they did what they did. Poop was my response to you saying you don't know about it. Oh. <laughs> Mark, how you doing, man? Hey, you're still boating down there in Texas. Um, that uh, there, I, just so that you guys don't think I'm crazy. The the poop comment. <laughs> um, I got nothing for you, Mark. Thanks for joining us. We are just getting ready to wrap up. Mark was on the podcast um, a month or so ago. He had bought a what a Harris. I don't remember what it was. I think it was a Harris with like a two. 50 maybe um 100 degrees today yeah take that you people in the upper midwest and northeast winterizing um yeah it was 85 at the at the football game today it was awesome out uh talked to my buddy uh at the game that um solstice that's right harris solstice um so there's still a lot of nice weather in in a good amount of the country um and yet i know that uh, my family back at the lake of the ozarks is um they are are getting their winterization scheduled because it uh, it will turn it will turn cold. So enjoy the weather down there, Mark. Thanks for joining. Um, and uh, I hey, let me know, Mark, when you're when you have time and your schedule allows. If you wanna if you wanna join me for an interview talking about the best boat captain on the water training, I would really appreciate it. Just shoot me a just shoot me a message. Three hundred. Sorry, Mark. 300 horsepower mercury solstice with the 300 merc um tri -tune. that's a fun boat that is a very fun boat as a matter of fact mark i think i put your picture in the newsletter last uh last month so appreciate it 90 in illinois today yeah hey that uh keep on boating until you have to put it away keep on boating. So, all right, guys, it is, it is nine o'clock. I appreciate you joining me and, um, I'm going to, I'm going to continue doing these Sunday eight o'clock. As long as we have interaction, I don't care if there's only six, eight people on, as long as I'm getting good questions, get to talk boats with some, some people that are appreciative of it and enjoying it. Um, I, I love it. So, um, thanks a lot. And we will talk to you on the next one next, uh, next Sunday, eight o'clock. Take care, everybody.